Next.js versus Astro. Let's do a quick comparison of the two frameworks and specifically focus on rendering strategies, meaning how do you actually render content to the page? We'll talk about SSG, SSR, CSR, and then server components. You probably have heard a little bit about React server components and how Next.js is using them. You might be surprised to find out that Astro has already been doing something very similar to this for a while now. So these are two of my very favorite frameworks. Let's go ahead and kind of dive into a comparison between Next.js and Astro specifically focused on rendering strategies. So I mentioned that I am a big fan of both of these frameworks. I have used Next.js for tons of demos for a few things that I've built. I've used Astro for my personal site and other sites, and I really enjoy both. And I think they have pros and cons, and it kind of depends on what type of website and application you're building. So one of the things I do want to mention, though, is that this kind of research for me came from creating an article for uh, my upcoming Astro course. So this is a free article on the blog page for the Astro course, astrocourse.dev. So this course will start to be released in the next month or so, and it'll cover kind of all the things that you would want to know with Astro. And I'm creating content on the blog to kind of show people how amazing Astro is. So let's kind of start with the first concept or rendering strategy here, which is SSG, which stands for static site generation or static site generator. And this is mostly what Astro is known for, even though that's not quite the direct exact comparison. But so a static site generator basically says instead of like a, a request comes in and we go and look up information in the database and then render markup or HTML and send that back to the user. Why don't we go ahead and for a blog, for example, go ahead and statically generate HTML pages for each one of our blog posts at build time. So then when the request comes in, we just send back this blog post. That's basically what static site generator means. And it's became or became really popular a few years ago in the Jamstack JavaScript APIs and markup. Now we've kind of evolved from that, but statically generating pages is still a very big topic. So one of the things I want to look at on the Astro side is data fetching. Now inside of Astro, they have a fetch function that uh, will work on the client and the server. So typically fetch is not supported in backend Node.js, although I think it is recently in one of the most recent versions, but it needs a polyfill to work and they provide that for you. So inside of Astro, basically any data that you get. So in this case, they're um, picking up data from random user.me slash API. They make a fetch request to get that data uh, asynchronously. So they wait for that. And then they just reference that data down here. This whole page is going to be generated as a static page by default. So that means during your build process, you run a build command in Netlify or Cell when you deploy this. During that build process, this page is going to go ahead and get built and it's going to pull in data from, in this case, this random user.me API. Cool. You don't really have to do anything to enable and or take advantage of static site generation inside of Astro. Again, this is why people think about Astro specifically as a static site generator, because that's how it is configured and meant to work by default. It obviously can do a lot more, which we'll cover in a second. So that's really nice. The other aspect about Astro to keep in mind is that Astro doesn't ship JavaScript to the browser by default. So same same idea. It does statically generated pages where it sends the HTML and doesn't even send JavaScript by default. You can send JavaScript and that's what these client load and client other thing directives. Basically, you're pulling in some some sort of component that um, that is able to that needs to run some sort of JavaScript on the browser and you tell it how to load that. But without that, it ships no JavaScript by default. That's really important. Now, this is a little more involved on the Next.js side. So in Next.js, let's go to a function called get static props. So if you want to pull in data for a static page on that page component, you have to export a specific function called get static props. So in this case, you basically and similarly, you fetch some sort of data or you get data from a database or wherever, and then you pass that as props to your component. You receive those props in your component, and then you can use those inside of your JSX to render it. So similar idea, but a little different implementation here of Astro supports SSG by default. Next.js, you have to export uh, this specific function, get static props for a static page. Now, there's one additional aspect of this uh, in Next.js that is get static paths. So get static props is for a given page. I want to get content at build time to be able to render it on that page. For get static paths, this is where we want to dynamically 
generate a series of pages at a dynamic slug or what seems like a dynamic slug for multiple pieces of content. So if you have blog one through 10, it'll be slash blog slash one slash blog slash two, et cetera. Now to define those paths statically, you export the get static paths function and you return back an object that has a paths property. And then inside of here, you have an array of objects that have a params property and then a name property or whatever the key is that you're looking for. Notice that this key should add up to what's inside of the brackets for this page component inside of Next.js because this name and this name have to match. And that's where you're going in your component to reference that name somewhere. So you would be able to reference that in your page to get the associated data with that given page. Now, coincidentally, this looks the exact same inside of Astro. So we can search for get static paths and inside of Astro to uh, define statically generated slugs or static paths, you have to do the same thing. So you have this bracket ID in here. So the ID is the key that we're focused on. And then inside of here for each path, we are returning an object with params and then the property that we're looking at. So same sort of idea, we export a, punch, a function for get static paths. Now, that is SSG, that statically generated content. What about if we want SSR or server side rendered content? Well, Next.js kind of keeps a very similar uh, path here where they have, it's actually on the sidebar, a get server side props function. So similar to get static props, get server side props allows you to run a function on the server before this page is rendered. So in this case, you export this function, the request comes into the page, you make this fetch request, you get the data, you pass it down to the component, and now everything gets sent to the browser because it has uh, the data that was loaded on the server. So the way you do this is by implementing the get server side props function, and now you're able to query data or pull in data dynamically as after the request comes in and before the re response goes back. In Astro, this is pretty, this is very different. So inside of here, let's do a search for SSR. For Astro, because it's statically generated content only by default, you have to enable the server output for Astro to be able to use server side rendering. So inside of here in your astro.config file, you would define the output to be server. So the key thing to know about this is that this means that every page component from then on is going to be rendered from the server. So if we go back to this fetch, so if we have this same exact uh, example here, after configuring this to use SSR, all of this stuff, similar to what was run in Next.js and the get server side props, all of this stuff is gonna be run on the server and then available to us inside of our component. Now, the cool thing about this is this actually has some sneaky similarities to React server components, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But that is how you enable SSR inside of Astro. And again, once you enable SSR, let's go back to the page that we were on. Once you enable SSR, all of your pages will be rendered on the server and none of them will be static by default. We'll come back to how to caveat that in a minute. Now, really quickly, I want to show you how I updated my desk with a couple of accessories from Grove made. Now, full transparency, they sent me these for free, but I've been really enjoying them. Now, first off is the wood MagSafe stand with the walnut finish. I think it looks absolutely beautiful and it's super, super sturdy and easy to use. Now, next up is the desk shelf, which is really nice because it's really open at the bottom so I can store all of my electronics for audio and it has the walnut finish as well. So it matches the MagSafe stand and it all looks really beautiful together. If you happen to be interested in any of these items from GroveMade, I've got an affiliate link in the description below, as well as a coupon code JAMESQ10 that you can use to get a discount. So that is SSR for server-side rendering. We've talked about SSG, which is statically generated content. And then we get into client-side rendering. And this is most commonly related back to the idea of a SPA framework or a single page framework, something like React or Vue or uh, Angular or Svelte or whatever. And so with those, when a request comes into a page, initially a big JavaScript bundle is loaded and then all of the routing and other things are handled inside of the client with JavaScript. Now I mentioned with Astro, you do not ship any JavaScript to the browser by default. So we have static pages by default. There's no JavaScript being sent to the pages or to the browser. Even if you enable SSR, it's still loaded on the, the data is loaded on the server, but then no JavaScript is sent to the browser by default. So this is where the idea of islands comes in. So let's go to the documentation just for islands. 
So Astro Islands. So Astro Islands is basically a way to define that for any given piece of our application, we only need JavaScript to be loaded here, here, and here, and not the entire page. That means that you can ship in here, you can see an example, static HTML for a sidebar, static HTML for a footer, because those things aren't changing, maybe static content over here. And then you have two different interactive islands, uh, they call them, which is basically where we want to ship JavaScript. So the header and the image carousel as an example. So how do you work with islands? How do you define to ship JavaScript for a specific piece of your application? Well, this is where one of the interesting benefits of Astro comes in, where you can use different frameworks, React, Preact, Svelte, Vue, Solid, Alpine, Lit, et cetera. You can use those frameworks inside of Astro and use them as islands. So we could create a component, they're referencing a JSX component up here. We could create that component and then import that into an Astro file and be able to reference that. But again, by default, that's not gonna send JavaScript. So if you're keeping state in React, for example, you'll have to add one of the client directives onto that component. In this case, this is client load. So this is where you get to specifically choose when and where you want your JavaScript, which is really, really nice. Now, let's switch this to Next.js and let's look up something called hydration. All right, so hydration in React, I guess this goes back to the React documentation, but basically what this is, is even if you create a static page inside of Next.js, when you send that static page to the browser, you're also sending JavaScript. And that JavaScript is there in case you need to do anything interactive or use state or whatever it is on the front end. So client side rendered content or additionally loaded content. Astro doesn't do that by default. Next.js does do that by default. So it sends you this extra JavaScript. Now the benefit of Astro in that sense is that the a truly just static page is going to probably load faster because it's not loading additional JavaScript versus Next.js will load the static page and then additionally load some JavaScript with it. So this means in Next.js, by default on any of your pages, if you want to add some sort of client-side rendered or loaded content or do client-side rendering in terms of navigating between pages, you have that JavaScript already there to help do some of that stuff intelligently. In fact, Next.js has a lot of intelligence around navigating from one page to another and preloading data so the next page loads faster, et cetera. So you have that JavaScript already at your disposal, disposal to do anything that you want to on the front end. Astro, you have to choose when and where you want to do that. Now, additional benefit or going back to the benefit of Astro Islands will lead us into a conversation of server components. So inside of Astro Islands, again, you have the ability to only load JavaScript for specific sections of your application. This is similar in concept to uh, Next.js layouts in the app router directory. Let's see if we can load the app router directory. So inside of the new app router directory, as of 13.4, I've got a recent video that you can watch for more details. You have the ability to have nested layouts. So if we do pages and layouts and then go down to uh, layout pattern, for example, you have the ability to define layouts for specific sections of your application. And so if you're doing changes in that specific layout, it can change itself and not have to re-render the rest of the application, for example. And you can go from a base layout, so the root layout of your application, and you can nest these continued further and further down. And again, only be able to, or only have to kind of re-render the pieces that need to be re-rendered based on those layouts or be reloaded based on those layouts. So you, ha you have a lot of things going on there that are uh, a benefit. Now let's look in to server components. And this is something that comes from React that is becoming very, very popular now. The use of server components inside of Next.js is now stable as of 13.4. There's a lot of mixed feedback about it being slow, the dev development environment being slow, not maybe not questions about stability because it's out of beta, but questions about like, I don't know, I, maybe it's stability. I don't know how you define it, but it's very, very new is an important thing for you to know. And so what server components allows you to do is allow you to query data from the server in what looks like a regular front end component. So here's a good example. So inside of this layout configuration file, it's able to load data asynchronously. And if you've worked in React before, you know that's not something you could ever do before. You couldn't just at the root of a component and in, directly inside of a component, await for data. So what happens here, now this is really cool, is with React server components, if you're querying, they run on the server, and if you're querying something or calling a function that's asynchronous, 
it's gonna go ahead and kind of render your markup or render your page without that content. And then as that data is being loaded in on the server and it's finished, it's gonna stream those updates to the browser. So this is a very different way of thinking about how we build applications, but we're now taking advantage of being able to load a, sh a shell of something on the browser to get immediate feedback to the user and then also stream in those updates from the, uh, from the server. So one of the implications of this is, let's see, loading component. So inside of your app directory routes, you can include a loading.js file. And what's cool about this is this actually kind of abstracts away the idea of React Suspense. Now this Suspense is something I've heard about for a long time, never fully understood it, never really spent the time to look into it. But basically what this does is you can define a loading component inside of your route. So if you have a route of slash and then blog, and then inside of there, you have your layout file, your index file, and then your loading file. If you're loading some sort of data in the layout file, like we just saw, so if you're doing this, where you're querying data from a database, for example, to get blog posts, if you're doing that asynchronously, it will then display whatever the loading component is first. And then when the data is ready from the server, it'll stream that to the browser. Again, very different way of thinking about that. I've got more of this with a hands-on demo in that recent video that I did covering the Next.js app, app router, but this is basically the future of Next.js. Now to compare this with Astro, Astro kind of already has that functionality built in, although I'm not sure about the loading state. The loading state that Next.js has done, I think is pretty, pretty neat. But when we, when we enable SSR in a project and when we then fetch data in one of those pages, so if we go back to data fetching, if we fetch data in a component that is already listed as SSR or in a project that is configured to be rendered on the server, it basically works the same as components. So it's going to kind of ship the initial page load to the browser and then it's gonna stream these results as it's finished asynchronously. So a lot of the benefits that you get with React Server Components, you've actually already got with Astro, which is really neat. And they don't even really go into details. We kinda had to dig and find that out, but it's a really interesting thing to note. So that is the server components idea. The last thing I have is the idea of hybrid rendering. And so with Next.js, hopefully that was relatively obvious that per page or per route, you could load data with get server side props or get static props. You could also use the new app router directory and you could use server components and or choose to use client components as well. So you have all the flexibility to do all those things. With Astro, you have the, by default, you have all statically generated pages and then if you want to, you can enable a server and then per page, you can enable the client. You can enable them to be rendered on the, <laughs> as pre-rendered as static pages. So to do that, you can export a pre-render equals true property in that page component that will make that specific page static while the rest of, uh, the, rest of the uh, pages and routes will be SSR or render on the server. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how Next.js and Astro compare when it comes to SSR server-side rendered content, SSG statically generated content, CSR client-side rendering and hydration, uh, server components, and then how you mix all these things together by doing a hybrid approach. So if you have any additional questions or things I can clear up, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna learn more about Astro, take a look at astrocourse.dev and there's a newsletter get, to get course updates and a launch day discount. In addition to kind of tips and tricks I'll send out for Astro. So if you're interested in that, check that out at astrocourse.dev. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.